What is up, everyone? Welcome to the first episode of the Casually Competitive Deck Tech brought to you by Discard to Reroll. So I am your host for this journey. My name is Ray, a.k.a. Thunder. And what I'm going to be doing here for you is just going through a deck that I think is super fun, uh, has a little bit of elements from some of the previous sets, as well as, uh, you know, some includes from Convergence. And I think that Troopers in general is sitting in a really nice spot. Uh, they gave a lot of love to uh, Hero Red Trooper uh, archetype specifically, and just wanted to kind of uh, take a deeper look at, at what a, a simple uh, yet competitive, um, you know, deck can be. I think this deck could be competitive if you, you know, were able to uh, get a lot of reps with it and know your lines of play. Uh, you know, it certainly remains to be seen what the meta will shake out to be. But I think that this is a good starting point uh, for both a, you know, casual player as well as a competitive player that kind of wants to get into the game and uh, wants to roll out a deck that is just super fun. So to start off, we have the uh, characters up top. We have our upgrades uh, right below them. Uh, then we're going to go into our supports and then our event package. So uh, this deck is kind of like a hero vehicle deck. It has small vehicles that you can get out for pretty cheap. And uh, you know that with your character dice enable you to uh, to dish out a heavy amount of ranged and indirect damage. Uh, and that's what we're, we're trying to do here. Uh, to gun down our opponent uh, by, you know, adding small advantages with, uh, you know, small supports that we really don't care if they get vandalized. Uh, because in the end, if uh, if some of these supports did get vandalized or uh, removed from the board, uh, we didn't invest too much into them to, to get them out there. So to start off, we're going to start with uh, Elite Rex, the clone captain. So hopefully you guys see that. It doesn't get cut off too much. Uh, but Rex has a really neat ability. Uh, it says, before you activate this character, you may spend one resource or spot a clone trooper to take control of the battlefield. So we already have our, our clone trooper over here. So as long as this clone trooper is alive, uh, we don't have to spend that additional resource. Uh, Rex is coming in at 11.14. Uh, we're going to be playing him at 14 at the elite version. Uh, we did a quick price out of this card. It's sitting around $10. I'm sure you can get it even cheaper uh, on eBay and some other secondary market uh, options. But it looks like, uh, you know, Commander uh, or Rex, not Commander Cody, that's going to be our next guy. Rex uh, is certainly going to be a nice addition in the meta. Uh, and I, I would love to see him uh, have a place because he is such a, a well-designed card. Uh, so obviously we see he's 50% damage sides. He also has the one focus on there and the one resource. So he is a character leader trooper, uh, which is uh, kind of uh, relevant in this deck because we do have a lot of uh, other cards that are going to kind of speak to the uh, trooper subtype. So moving on, we have clone commander Cody, uh, the loyal strategist. Uh, he comes in at nine health. Uh, die sides again, 50% damage sides. He's got a resource and a special. His special's uh, pretty unique. It says take control of the battlefield and use its claim ability or power action even if it's been used this round. So we're going to play him at uh, a single die at nine, and uh, he allows us to kind of push push a little bit beyond the normal 30 character point uh, pairing, uh, and uh, he reduces the cost of our clone troopers in play by one. So essentially, uh, you know, he's going to be the nine cost character, and then our clone trooper over here is technically going to be seven uh, character points to play. So uh, moving right along, and we'll come back to, to Commander Cody and why that special uh, becomes relevant. Uh, but moving on, we have the Clone Trooper. Again, I already explained this uh, helps Rex and his ability to kind of uh, uh, steal the battlefield away from your opponent if they uh, are the ones that do possess it uh, upon activating them, uh, as long as you can spot this guy. And this guy is 8 health. Uh, he is a character trooper. Again, 50% damage sides. Uh, the only drawback on him is he has two blank sides, uh, but he does have that uh, one resource. Uh, so he has a cool ability. It says, after you activate this character, you may reroll this die or... If you control the battlefield, so Rex would help us steal that battlefield away if we 
didn't already have it, uh, you may reroll one of your character dice. So he allows us to reroll any other character dice out there. So we have a four dice start. Uh, the health pool is what? So we got uh, 28 health sitting here. Um, so Rex is 11, 9, 8. Yep, looks like 28 health. So a uh, decent amount of health. And some of the other cards in the deck are certainly going to allow us to extend uh, that health pool even more. Now, as far as the battlefield goes, I left two options here. Uh, I don't know why that's going to come in sideways, but it is what it is. It's TTS. This is uh, what we deal with. Uh, but it says uh, it's called Military Camp. And it says, uh, power action. Activate up to two of your characters that share a subtype. So all of our characters share the subtype of trooper. It says, if one of those characters is a trooper, you may reroll one of its character dice. So the cool interaction here is uh, if you were to activate Rex, you can steal this battlefield if, if your opponent does have it at this point. You can steal the battlefield away. Uh, and then next action, you can power action and then you can activate cody as well as the clone trooper and then you can re-roll basically two dice because you have made uh have the battlefield and the clone trooper has its own ability allowing you to activate and uh re-roll another dice so allows you to, to get some free re-rolls out of the the whole thing um so you could certainly go this option which is military camp uh it's card 178 from convergence uh now a card that is also going to be sideways, uh, is Bendu's Lair. And this is something that I think is, is really unique uh, because of Commander Cody's special. Uh, now, this is a battlefield that comes with a die, the only battlefield in the game that has a, a die associated with it. And it has a power action. It says, roll this die into your pool. After you take control of this battlefield, remove its die. So, basically, uh, if your opponent does grab this, um, you can certainly activate Rex and then steal it right away. If they were to grab this and then activate it as their first action, um, you can kind of remove that. Now, if you do hit Commander Cody special, it, he would allow you to power action this again, even if your opponent ha had already done so. Uh, but another cool kind of element here is if you have Bendu's Lair and you activate it as your first action, resolve the die, the die which is actually pretty decent. Uh, you know, two damage sides, a focus, and then uh, a two shield side and a resource. And then if you were to hit Commander Cody's, you can then activate this die again. So, uh, you know, you are sacrificing Cody's die for a Bendu's Lair die, but I, I still think it, it has uh, certain applications in the game uh, that could be kind of beneficial. Uh, moving on, we're going to hit our upgrades. So this is our upgrade section. So this is a card that I'm super excited about, and specifically in a trooper build, it is Riot Shield. Uh, it's basically an armored plating from the, the previous uh, kind of cycled uh, awakenings block um, and uh, basically it allows you to block up to two damage that is dealt to whatever character this is on uh, but if it's on a trooper it allows you to deal three or block up to three damage so uh, we're going to get a value of uh, six damage kind of saved from from just those two cards total investment is going to be uh, two resources to block up to six damage which i think is well above the curve uh, Moving on, uh, we have uh, two copies of uh, Dorsal Turret. Now, Dorsal Turret is going to be uh, used as an upgrade weapon mod for some of the vehicles that we're going to play. Again, we're really not putting a lot of stock in the vehicles. If they do get blown up, even with one of these mods on them, uh, you know, the, the total investment could pro possibly be, you know, three uh, resources so not a huge deal but if we are able to get this out cheap and kind of sneak under the radar uh, we can get a lot of utility out of this die uh, then we move on to two copies of triple laser turret so this helps us uh, kind of keep some of the uh, vehicle die dice protected uh, with triple laser turrets text which says while this die is in your pool attached supports die cannot be removed by your opponent uh, so it safeguards some of our um, our, our vehicle uh, dice a little bit better. Uh, again, it's not going to protect it from getting vandalized. However, uh, just a really strong card. Uh, moving on to the supports, so uh, this is kind of the the real meat and potatoes of the deck. It is a uh, you know small support hero vehicle deck. Uh, we have two copies of suppressive fire, so just a little bit of mitigation on board. Uh, I really do like that. Uh, we have. 
two copies of Tech Team. Uh, now, this deck is not going to generate a large amount of money. Uh, you know, we don't have access to a battlefield like Weapons Factory Alpha anymore, which would have decreased your uh, the first vehicle you played, uh, the cost of it, by one resource. So we're going to go with Tech Team, which essentially does the same thing, uh, but we do have to invest one resource into it. It pays for itself on the turn that it's out, but we do have to... Uh, kind of uh, hope that we draw into it. Now, uh, a rule of thumb here is if you were drawn to a tech team, uh, you know, your opening uh, opening hand, I would suggest keep it. Anything beyond that can sometimes feel like a dead card, uh, but tech team uh, is certainly a decent addition here. We're going to be running with the four X-Wings. I think that this mechanic is just still really strong uh, for the amount that you're going to invest into them. And every X-Wing you play, uh, not only are you getting the, the benefit of adding another support uh, to the board and furthering your board state, so your overall board presence uh, with more vehicles, but you're also bolstering up the power of the X-Wing that's currently on board as well as the one that comes into play so i think it uh you know sky's the limit with the, with these guys uh if you're able to uh, live the dream and get down all four uh you know the die sides on this is four ranged four range paying a dollar four indirect uh the disrupt and the shield so i think it just adds a lot of value it's a it's a huge kind of a, a voltron win condition that you can go to towards and uh you know i don't think the x-wings are getting a lot of love so you could probably pick them up for pretty cheap right now all right, we have two copies of probably still the the, the best valued two cost uh, red vehicle out there, and it's the Resistance Crate Speeder. Uh, so it's 50% damage sides, also has a shield and a resource. Uh, and the first time you can resolve this die, uh, you can increase its its overall kind of power uh, by one. So that that's in regards to the shields and the resources as well. Uh, but certainly we'd like to hit that damage. So the first time you resolve the die, it's two ranged, three ranged, three indirect. Uh, just a lot of value there. Now I have been messing around with builds that uh, drop Rex down to a single die and replace Commander Cody with uh, an elite rose. Uh, so that's something you could probably look into and you'd get a lot more utility uh, off of the uh, resistance crate speeder uh, over and over again because of roses special. But uh, we're going to go with the, the troopers right now and uh, maybe that'll be another deck that we kind of uh, uh, look into. Now, here, here's a card that I think, uh, you know, it saw previous, uh, it saw play in previous metas, and uh, a lot of people liked it, uh, thought it was a lot of value for what you're actually getting. Now, I have this personal theory that anything that has a three uh, indirect side on it is a good card, uh, or it has potential to be a good card. Now, I think the reason that the ARC-170 Starfighter fell out of favor uh, is because we were generating so much resources at one point that we could just get out bigger bombs, uh, kind of uh, bridge the gap between a small support and a you know bomb support such as like a Vader's fist and uh, the planetary bombardments at one point uh, were, were really hot. But I still think uh, ARC-170 uh, Starfighter is great. It's 50% damage sides with uh, two base range sides um, and that three indirect side. It also has a cool mechanic that it really can't get blown up by vandalizes because it says before the support is discarded from play, you may return it to its owner's hand. Now, I understand we're not going to get the value of possibly even getting it out the same turn it got blown up uh, just due to resource restrictions, but it's kind of like safeguarding it a little bit. Uh, you could feel a little bit more confident that you're not losing complete value, uh, but then again, it might be uh, tough to kind of get it back down on board. But I think it's a, uh, it's a cool thing to note uh, because that application really doesn't come in too often. Uh, now, moving on to the uh, events of the deck, this was really the, the main reason that I wanted to build the deck. I thought that the events uh, really... Uh, kind of nourished the the red hero as well as the trooper archetype and uh i thought uh with with i keep saying commander cody with rex in mind i really thought uh you know they, they kind of designed some of these cards geared towards him and to start it off uh we have a zero cost event from convergence it's card number 126 it is called fresh supplies it says play only if you control the battlefield so it's really nice that we have Rex's mechanic or his ability to steal the battlefield away. Then our first action can be to play this, and now we're sitting on three resources or more, depending on what round we're in and how much resources you were able to generate. Now, I play, I'm play. i playing this card just to kind of emphasize Rex's ability. You can certainly play 
logistics. However, I do like this card a little bit more because we still are able to always steal the battlefield as long as Rex is alive. And if they're able to maybe uh, kill Rex, uh, you know, they'll have to, to, to wipe him off the board turn one uh, to really take this this option away. Uh, and early game, you're always going to want to ramp and, and get to... Uh, you know, a decent board state. So I think Fresh Supplies is a, a, a really nifty addition. But like I said, you could certainly add logistics. Uh, so this card uh, is what I'm super excited about. It's called Measure for Measure. Um, and if you're, you know, familiar with previous metas of the game, uh, there was a yellow villain card uh, called He Doesn't Like You. Uh, it read very similar to this. It didn't have the restriction, but uh, still it was the uh, essentially the same mechanic. It's a zero cost. It's an event. It's neutral, so you could play it on, on any troopers you can find on hero or villain. Um, and it says remove one of your trooper dice to remove a die. So Basically, uh, the number one dice that we're probably going to hit is the clone trooper die. Um, you know, he, he's more likely to hit those blanks. And, uh, you know, I'd certainly trade that die for any dice uh, or any die across the board. Uh, so if you if you do find, uh, you know, someone's playing a Vader's Fist or uh, the new Entourage and you just kind of want to remove that dice, uh, you're able to, to take away one of your dice and, uh, you know, take that off the board. So I still think it's really strong and it doesn't cost anything to play uh, other than a dice uh, we have two copies and i think this is just was another reason why i wanted to play this so we have these four kind of heal cards uh, it's two copies of field medic and that's the the field medic with the new art on it uh, i am still going to sleeve up my old school field medic with finn on the uh on the the front of it uh, but this is uh, pay one heal two damage from a character so super cool uh, again we're really going to kind of uh, be obnoxious with the the heal cards we have first aid uh, this was released in across the galaxy way of the force one of those um, and it is uh, heal two damage from a red character or four damage instead if it's the first round of the game. So you can really kind of uh, turn back the clocks on your opponent's round one if they got kind of got the jump on you. Uh, you're able to play first aid and wipe off four total damage from one of your characters. Uh, again, they're going to be targeting Rex, so uh, always keep these heal cards in mind when you see uh, what, what Rex is, uh, the amount of damage that's on Rex. Uh, next card is also from Convergence. It is called Near Miss. Uh, it is card number 166. It is a neutral card. It says spot two characters that share the same subtype to remove a die. So all of our characters are trooper. Uh, so as long as, you know, at least two of our characters are still alive, we are able to meet this spot requirement and uh, remove a die. So we don't have a, a ton of mitigation in here, but the things that we do have are uh, hard removal. Basically, uh, we can remove any dice that we see. So we have these four cards here that allow us to remove any dice that we see. Uh, we also have the suppressive fire that allows us to remove any character dice that we'd like. Uh, the riot uh, shield allows us to block any damage that we'd like. Um, and then the, uh, the heal cards allow us to heal any damage that came through. Uh, so it doesn't matter how it came through or, or what it was. Um, so I think healing is actually really strong right now. And then we have two copies of probably still one of the best mitigation cards in the game. It's Into the Garbage Chute. Again, our little uh, clone trooper is probably going to be subject to both uh, measure for measure as well as getting thrown into the garbage chute. Uh, now, this is our only type of removal uh, other than kind of the suppressive fire that has some type of restriction and uh it's you have to remove up to two dice showing damage but again it does not matter uh the the, the values that are showing on them uh it could be a one ranged a one melee all the way up until uh a shadow casters uh you know six ranged side so uh this card gains a lot of value uh, extends our turns uh, a little bit more, uh, or extends us, you know, round after round. Uh, this, along with the healing. So as far as mitigation, we have two, four, uh, six, eight. I like to look at this as 10 mitigation cards. And then these, to me, are each like half a mitigation card. Um, you could you can make the case that they are, you know, mitigation, but more passive. Uh, healing is, is always strong. Uh, but uh, this is the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to do more videos just like this. Uh, let me know what you think. And you can always find us uh, at discard to reroll.com and be sure to check us out uh, on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play. We are on all of those platforms. And uh, we are currently working on 
the live recordings where we uh, kind of have our own Discord and you can, uh, I'll put the link to the Discord in the description as well, but you can enter in and during our live recordings, you can pop in there. Uh, the cool thing about that is you could be on a cell phone, you can have your own mic hooked up to your computer and uh, we'll select guests, we'll have them hop in and kind of chat with myself and Chip. Uh, but thank you so much, really appreciate all of the support and I'll see you in the next video.